Welcome to Communication Skills. This resource is looking at using speaking frames to develop your learner's communication skills. Now this resource is designed for learners who struggle with day-to-day -day interpersonal interactions, are unfamiliar with the conventions of routine interactions, and suffer from intense anxiety in social situations. Now, many of your learners won't fall into this category, but for many learners who have English as a second language, or for learners who are at the lower steps of the learning progressions, this may be highly applicable. Improving learners' introductions using speaking frames. The way we're gonna do this is by using speaking frames to improve learners' interactions by, firstly, identifying routine interactions between people. Number two, we're going to get the learners to develop their own speaking frames in collaboration with you, the tutor. Number three, we're going to get learners to practice and then adapt their speaking frame. And number four, we're going to gradually reduce their reliance on the speaking frame. Additionally, at the end of this resource, we're going to look at a couple of different ways that you can use speaking frames to further develop your learners' skills. Step one, learners share experiences of greetings. Now, a great way to initiate discussion around speaking frames and introductions is to have learners share embarrassing experiences that they might have had or awkward experiences. And this might be particularly good for those learners who find introducing themselves quite difficult. Number two, emphasize the way in which a clear and confident introduction makes a good impression on listeners. Now, a good thing for the learners to know is that no matter how nervous you are on the inside, so long as you present yourself clear and concisely, it makes a great impression on others. And number three, if possible, show an example of a successful introduction. There's always those people who introduce themselves really well. It's a good idea to have a look at those and analyze what aspects of their introduction makes it so impressive. Now, once that's done, move on to step two and discuss the parts of an introduction. So number one, ask the learners to think about the different types of events that require an introduction to be given. And generally this will break down into two areas. Group introductions, where you're introducing yourself to an entire group. Now these introductions are usually non-responsive, that is the learners will just stand and introduce themselves to a group, but there'll be no dialogue back and forward. And the second one that comes up is conversational introductions when you're meeting people casually or formally, but it's going to be a dialogue between you and them. And then number two, ask learners to identify what information needs to be included in each type of introduction and record these on the board. Now here's an example of the things that you might get back from learners. Now some learners will say you need to give your pepeha. Others will say you need to give your first name, where you are from, a greeting, for example, you might initiate with uh, good morning, morena, greetings, you know, whatever it is. Uh, the company or association that you are representing, family name, and the purpose, why you were there. And so the learners will generate a whole lot of different ideas that you can write up on the whiteboard. Number three, then you want to order the information into a sequential order. So we're gonna put those into some kind of order. For example, you're not likely to tell people why you were at the event before you give them your name. You know, there's just a natural order. Usually you give your name first and so on. And then end the introduction on a question if in a conversation. So something we're gonna look at in a further resource is around asking people questions, making sure the conversation flows back and forward. And so we're gonna look at that as well. So here's an order you might use if you're introducing yourself to a group. You might give a greeting or a pepeha. Uh, you'd give your first name, a family name, where you're from, where you've traveled from, the company or association you're representing, and the purpose why you are here. And so obviously this has a more formal feel about it, whereas a conversational introduction might be somewhat different. Now, the following part to this is to develop the frame. So you're gonna take what the learners have generated and put on the board, and now you've put it into an order, and we're simply gonna write it into a script. So this is a script that somebody could read if they were introducing themselves at say a workshop or something like this. So this is just an example for somebody who's on a customer service workshop, and they work for the warehouse. Greeting, hello, my name is Derek Halliday. I live in Taupo and I work for the warehouse and then finish with the purpose. I'm really looking forward to learning some new ways to work with customers and getting to know you. Now, this might seem a little forced and contrived, 
But the idea is that you have learners practice it in class and they can read from the script. And what happens is as they gradually get used to the script, they can adapt it and it will sound far more natural. Hello, my name is Derek Halliday. I live in Taupo and I work for The Warehouse. I'm really looking forward to learning some new ways to work with customers and getting to know you. And what happens is this can become a script for the learners that they can fall back on whenever they're in a social situation like this. So in this case, it's a little more natural. Hi, I'm Derek Halliday. I work with Sarah at The Warehouse. And what do you do? And if you just note as we go through there, you can see that we have the greeting and you might write any greeting that you naturally use in there. Hi, hello, Mordena, etc. First name, family name, we're just going to combine those together. I'm Derek Halliday. And then link to a common point of reference. If you're meeting a new person, it's always great to be able to point to something or mention something that you both know. And so the learners would have time to think about what this thing might be. But for example, I work with Sarah at the warehouse. So you're introducing yourself to a new person who knows Sarah, and you can just say, I work with Sarah at the warehouse. And then you're going to ask them a question. And so we're going to just write this straight into the frame. And what do you do? And the idea is then the listener, the person you're introducing yourself to, has to respond back to you. Now, this might again seem a little contrived and a little bit clunky, but the idea is to have the learners practice it in class, become more and more natural with it, and eventually memorize it so they don't have to read it off the script anymore. Further applications. Just for an example, if you were going to go to uh, Mirai and you were going to give you a pepeha, then you could write this into your frame as well and you could practice it. And the idea is that you learn it by heart and then you can slowly remove the frame and you don't have to walk around with the frame. But again, it's scaffolding and you can just practice this. And finally, you can also use a frame for speeches, for example. Uh, if you're asking learners to give speeches and they're not sure how to do this, then you can give them this form here or something like this, which has an introduction, a body and a conclusion. And in the section on introduction, you can see that it says state, topic and main point, list supporting points. And the learners would begin to write in their own content there. Supporting point one, supporting point two, supporting point three. Summarize main points and the call to action. But the idea here is again that it scaffolds their ability to deliver a speech and it helps them relax and know there's a sequence to it. And ideally, uh, they would stop using the frame once they have memorized the process. In summary, speaking frames are a great way to support your learners to improve their communication skills. They're most effective when you write them in collaboration with the learner as then they most represent their natural speaking style. We wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you.